mother says, we'll be ready to eat as soon as father comes home. My, I hope he's not late, don't you? And here's father now, coming home from his daily work. Father's home, dinner's ready. There's time, isn't there, mother? There's time. With time on my hands. Our cities are prime targets for atomic attack. But possibly, there may be no time. An attack could come without warning. The immediate danger is over in about a minute. Once you hear this, act fast. Have a good flashlight on hand. Electric lights may go out. Keep a first aid kit and learn how to stop bleeding. Diplomatically speaking, of course. Is everybody set? Ready? Lights! Action! Good evening, London. I thought it time we had a little talk. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. I suppose you're wondering why I've called you here this evening. Well, you see, I'm not entirely satisfied with your performance lately. I'm afraid your work's been slipping and, well, we've been thinking about letting you go. Oh, I know, I know. You've been with the company a long time now, almost. Let me see. Almost 10,000 years. My word. Doesn't time fly? Seems like only yesterday. I remember the day you commenced your employment. Swinging down from the trees, fresh-faced and nervous, a bone clasped in your bristling fist. Where do I start, sir? You asked plaintively. I recall my exact words. There's a pile of dinosaur eggs over there, youngster. I said, smiling, paternally the while. Get sucking! Well, we suddenly come a long way since then, haven't we? And yes, yes, you're right. And all that time you haven't missed a day. Well done, though, good and faithful servant. Also, please, don't think I forgot about your outstanding service record or all of the invaluable contributions that you've made to the company. Fire, the wheel of agriculture. It's an impressive list, old timer. A jolly impressive list. Don't get me wrong. Putting pollutants into the air faster than the atmosphere can clean them out. Doesn't he realize he is doing this? I mean, he seems quite sophisticated technologically. He seems to ignore it. Incredible. Vades as more. What are the prospects for us? What are the chances that we can inhabit this planet? Captain, my unit has prepared a projection into the future of this planet based on current trends. Proceed with your report, Lieutenant. But, well, to be frank, we've had our problems too. There's no getting away from it. Do you know what I think a lot of it stems from? I'll tell you. It's your basic unwillingness to get on within the company. You don't seem to want to face up to any real responsibility or to be your own boss. Lord knows you've been given plenty of opportunities. We've offered you promotion time and time again and each time you've turned us down. I can handle the work, Governor. You wheedled. I know my place. To be frank, you're not trying, are you? You see, you've been standing still for far too long. And it's starting to show in your work. And I might add, in your general standard behavior. The constant bickering on the factory floor has not escaped my attention, nor the recent bouts of rowdiness in the staff canteen. Then, of course, there's... Well, I didn't really want to have to bring this up, but, well, you see, I've been hearing some disturbing rumors about your personal life. No, never you mind who told me. No names, no back drill. I understand that you are unable to get on with your spouse. I hear that you argue. I am told that you shout. Violence has been mentioned. I am reliably informed that you always hurt the one you love. The one you shouldn't hurt. At all. What about the children? It's always the children who suffer, as you're well aware. Poor little mites. What are they to make of it? What are they to make of your bullying, your despair, your cowardice, and all your fondly nurtured bigotries? 
Really, it's not good enough, is it? And it's no good blaming the drop in work standards upon bad management either. Though, to be sure, the management is very bad. In fact, let us not mince words. The management is terrible. We've had a string of embezzlers, frauds, liars, and lunatics making a string of catastrophic decisions. This is plain fact. But who elected them? It was you. You who appointed these people. You who gave them the power to make your decisions for you. While I'll admit that anyone can make a mistake once, to go on making the same lethal error century after century seems to me nothing short of deliberate. You have encouraged these malicious incompetents who have made your working life a shambles. You accepted without question their senseless orders. You allow them to fill your workspace with dangerous and unproven machines. All you had to say was no. You have no space. Fine. You have no pride. You are no longer an asset to the company. I will, however, be generous. You will be granted two years to show me some improvements in your work. If, at the end of that time, you are still unwilling to make a go of it, you're fired. That will be all. You may return to your labors. But do I have to bother with all these special words? Maybe I'd better. I certainly want to have a say in how the house is decorated. The words you use, they sound good, and uh, they seem to be the right words to say what you mean. Well, that's, I, well, that's what I... Where'd you learn all those words? In the morning newspaper, he found words that looked familiar enough Yet when he studied them, their meanings weren't explicit. Well, you certainly surprised me with your vocabulary. Yes, indeed. Be more explicit. And making our demands explicit. <laughs>